I don't, shut up, Marianne. <laughs> shut up, Ashley. <laughs> they were, <laughs> they were really cheap. It's not because I like dogs. You already know this at all. So, shh, fine. They're little dogs. They're little bulldogs that are cute and not urinating on things like my dogs. So, ugh. Y'all are so funny. <laughs> no, Marianne, I still don't like dogs. Okay, so this week, we were gone all week, some of your leaders, to an Eric Warre training. The really cool thing is we got to hear from so many different people, and we didn't know who was with what company, so we truly could go and just learn. Um, we learned from all different kinds of people. I learned things that I am like doing way wrong as a leader or not, maybe not like wrong, but that I want to change and like places where I can grow that I didn't even know, you know, where I could grow. And then I learned some things that I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. That's normal. And, and it was just so good. I'm going to start and just share a few things and then I'm going to pass it off to everyone else. Um, and these were like just some aha things for me. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, yes, I have related this to me. And so if it doesn't, the shoe doesn't fit you, that's okay. That is okay if you're like, yeah, that's not my situation or that's not something that I want to do. That's okay. And that's what I loved about this conference is it was ideas that um, you could just take what works for you and what you want to explore. <clears throat> um, one thing that I did realize is that, okay, this person that is at the gym I love you and I am not you. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're so cute. They're going hard on the like little bike and I'm like <laughs> distracted. You know, I'm easily distracted. Sorry. Um, okay. One thing that they talked about is whenever you start your month, your year, whatever it is, when you have a goal, you should have a campaign. And at first I was like, no, I just get up and I just want to change people's lives every day. Right. Um, some months I work towards this. Some months I work towards that. But when you really have a clear goal and you have a clear, that is like embarrassing, my bra is hanging on the door, sorry. And you have a clear campaign, um, you can reach your goals. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. So I oftentimes am, am very guilty of being super numbers driven, right? But a certain number does not equal success and it doesn't even equal you meeting your goals, okay? Like, for instance, last month, I just chased the leaderboard, right? But what was my goal, really? What, why am I here, really? I'm really here to change lives and to duplicate myself, right? So I, it made me stop, and it made me think, because I was hearing different people's um, campaigns, and I'll explain to you what that means, and I thought, wow, I don't even have one. Like, I don't even have a clear vision. Um, it made me stop and think, like, what did I do this last year? Well, I'm super, super proud of myself and super proud of our team, I thought, man, if I could have taken that and done it with more clarity and with more of a vision, then we could have duplicated even more lives changed, right? So here's what I mean. These are two different um, campaigns that I heard, and I'm kind of taking from them. I'm going to make my own. One of them was 20 lives in 30 days. And these people would focus on changing 20 lives in 30 days and then working with those 20 people. They could work with them for the next 90 days, for the next four months, however long it may be. But they had a very, very clear vision of they were going to take, you know, 30 days, change 20 lives, and then train the heck out of those people. Now I was like, wow. That's super focused, right? Not that the number's right or wrong. That's irrelevant. It's that they were super focused. They knew what they were going for, and they knew exactly where their focus was. I realize for me, I wake up every day just, I mean, of course I want to change lives, but it's just like willy-nilly, right? It's like if there's 10 today, great. If there's one today, great. But without a clear plan. Um, Y'all know I'm not organized, and you'll be really proud. I'm about to get really organized because – Another thing, which probably one of the other girls I'll let talk about, um, was being intentional. Another campaign was um, like five or how five people. I don't remember exactly what their campaign was, but this is what I translated it to. If I work on bringing in four and four, which would be our VIP 1600 every month and no more, 
No more than that. Because if I sign up 50 people in a month, can I truly give them what they need? No, I can't. I am living proof of a leader that can come to you and said, yes, Mickey, I, I'm a leader that can come to you and say, I failed. I failed this last year. I did really, really good for me and really, really good for our team in some areas. And then there are other areas where I dropped the ball. And why I was so focused on the next win, the next life I can change. And while I'm sitting here thinking I'm doing it selflessly, what I'm really doing is selling the people short that I'm bringing into our team. So the aha for me was, you don't need to go out and sign 100 people. Yes, this is the same person that sat in front of you signing 100 people last month, right? I am the first one to own my behavior and own my mistake and go, those people aren't going to get what you need. They're not going to get the customer service you need. They're not going to get the training you need. And then guess what? You will kill yourself trying to duplicate because you can't. So my biggest message that I took away from that is if you're not signing a hundred people a month and you're beating yourself up over it, stop because I'm beating myself up over doing that now. Okay. Um, be proud of where you are. I have struggled with these two concepts in my career. Even when I was a teacher and a behavior specialist, you have to think about quality over quantity, not quality of who you bring into your business, quality of what you give them. So I used to think like, oh, well, am I bringing in quality people? No, 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 no. Don't think of it like that. Are you giving them quality mentorship? Are you giving them quality time? Are they only getting you whole group? Are they only getting a little bit of you when you could be giving them a lot? I want you to think about that. If I take four people and I pour into those just four people every month and they go and they duplicate, that's going to equal a whole lot more lives changed than me running on a hamster wheel every month, just trying to sign people, just trying to get them in the computer. And here's what else I know. Our company has VIP 1600 set up for a reason. Our trips are structured like that for a reason, right? You know you can earn VIP. You have three months to do it. What do you need? 12 and 12. Oh, 4, 8, 12. 4, 8, 12, right? Here's why I'm telling you this. I know so many people have beat themselves up, and they're like, well, I'm not going as fast as so-and-so. Good for you. Good for you. Because you are taking your time. It is okay Putting your foot on the gas does not mean putting people in the computer. Putting your foot on the gas means growing your influence, okay? And I got a huge wake-up call with that at this, at this training. I was like, wow, I am not giving my girls and my team everything I could be because I'm literally trying to do all of these things. And when you try to do all of these things, you do all of them kind of good. But what if you could do just a few of them really good, okay? Um, so no matter what I know, starting Monday, tomorrow, Jay's actually, I made him go out in the cold because he came home and didn't find a calendar. And I said, you have to go find me a calendar. And he's like, you don't use a calendar. And I'm like, I need one broken down in 30 minute increments. And he's like, well, tomorrow I'm like, no, I won't start my Monday without it now. And he's like, oh, okay. Like you're psycho. Who have you turned into? I've turned into someone that's going to work up and um, go, wake up and work with intention. And I'm, I know one of the other girls will talk about that. So I don't want to talk about that. Um, okay. Two other things I'm going to talk about. If you're new to this industry and this doesn't make sense to you, be okay with that. Okay, but if this does speak to you, listen to what I have to say. In any team, in anything that you do in MLM, you should grow at a healthy 10% every month. Okay, a healthy 10% every month. A lot of times when you have a self-starter, they'll come in and they'll grow a lot faster than that, right? Well, what happens when you grow really fast? You fall really fast. Okay, there's three different stages, growing, decreasing, and plateauing. I don't have a chart to show you. I wish I did. But just imagine a steady um, climb of 10% doesn't look like you're shooting up a lot, right? It's just a little at a time, a little at a time, a little at a time. Now, what our team, not me, what our team did is we came in 
And we went from $220,000 in volume one month, and the next month we were at $749,000 in volume. That's a huge increase. Guess what? When you have that decrease, it's going to fall. I am here as your leader and as someone that finally got validation from other leaders in the industry that tells you you will fall. You will probably lose rank. And that is okay. That does not define you. Here's what defines a healthy organization. Are you falling below that line of steady growth of 10%? And are you able to recover it? If the answer is no, yes. And I don't, Mickey, you know, like my vocabulary isn't as strong as yours. So maybe you can <laughs> explain that word. But that was like a light bulb that went off in my head. I thought, for so many reasons, whenever I fall or whenever things decrease, I worry and I panic. And I'm like, eh. it is insane to think that you would grow at higher than 10% and keep growing at that rate. It's not healthy. It doesn't work. It's not sustainable. What you need to do is know if you grow and you fall, that's exactly what should happen. That's exactly what happens in any industry. But that 10% steady increase is where your bedrock is formed. That's where your foundation is solidified. That is where the people that are going to be with you in five years and that are steadily growing, that's where they're going to develop. But if you're just really busy chasing the $749,000 in volume every month, you are going to beat yourself up. You are going to forget about the people that are supposed to be your bedrock. And man, that hit me like a ton of bricks because we did, you know, our team lost rank. It, we did, but we got it back in three months. And it lets me know that instead of chasing that number, 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 you have to solidify your foundation. So if you are like me and you've ever lost rank, that's normal. That's okay. What's not normal is if you lose it and your volume falls to zero and you got nothing and you try and try and try and you got nothing. That's where we were in the past. That's not where we are here. Um, yes. No, you're fine, Chelsea. And that's like a lot of us come from, we call it Emerald City over here. Um, we were from that place. And so any, like anytime we saw a decrease, we started to freak out because we're like, here's deja vu. No, it happens everywhere, but with a healthy organization, you can measure yourself on a different scale, okay? Um, be okay with where you're at, admit where you are, and build upon that foundation is the last thing I'm going to say. Um, if you don't admit where you are or where you have fallen to and you walk around and you carry yourself, like for instance, um, y'all know there are weeks that I made $30,000, right? A week. whoop de doo dah Guess what? That's not my reality right now. I still make good money, but I'm not going to beat myself up. So like if your check was really, really good one week and then the next week you're like, oh, that's normal. But be okay with where you are. Don't pretend to be at your highest pinnacle in your career every day because if you do, you're lying to everyone else and you're lying to yourself. You have to know where you are because if you're trying to – um say, well, I make five figures a week and you don't, then you can't grow. You are like consciously not going to be able to grow, right? Because you're not admitting to yourself where you are. It's okay. You're not going to have a good day every day. The best thing that they said is you have, you have to have in your mind that you have two kinds of day, a good day and a growing day. That's it. A good day and a growing day. And it is, yeah, you, it's like comparing apples and oranges. I was so like when I walked um when I walked out of there I felt normal I felt empowered I felt like man I got a lot of areas I want to grow and I felt excited um I'm gonna let some other girls talk because I could talk forever and I want them to share their takeaways um ja, Julia are you at the airport yet do you want to go first since you're headed to the airport Um, I'm not sure I have good reception, but I can try. I hear you. Okay. 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 So a few things that really impacted me and I missed like the first four or five minutes cause I had no reception. Um, but I would just say that one of the biggest things I know we chatted about this court when we had our little huddle afterwards was really treating this industry because that's what, you know, obviously the event was about was 
being a pro at it. Um, you know, there was a long time, especially in um, Emerald City, where we were like, oh, well, this is just a side gig. Um, and especially with being in the military and for almost 19 years, I've always just kind of been like, oh, well, this is my side gig. This is how I make my extra money. Well, if your mindset is that it's a side gig, then that's always what it's going to be for you. It's just going to be a side gig. And that's the type of income. Her reception's breaking up just a little bit. It's your full-time gig and that's how you're going to run it. Then that's what you're going to start getting from your business because your, your mind is going to be shifting into a mentality of this is where you're taking it. You're going to become a pro at it. And that's, that's really like the, I was blown away because it was so many network marketers. Like it wasn't obviously just our business, um, which is what we were used to previously with Emerald city. Um, but it was all network marketing, marketing, like across the world. And so it was amazing to see, and I, you probably said this before, I probably missed it, but it was amazing to see the impact, you know, just from like water drilling in countries, third world countries that um, were paid through, you know, this type of professional work and um, the impact of lives that were able to change just through this network um, marketing business um, and just taking it to a different um, level. And I know you guys can't see me. I'm sorry. I'm like in the fields of Sacramento somewhere. <laughs> um, but that was one of the huge things that um, was a huge takeaway for me was just was treating it like you're a professional in this business and pouring into it um, and letting it pour into you as well. Because um, I mean, we really just took away so many nuggets. Um, I don't obviously I can't read my notes while I'm driving. But that was a huge one was treating it as a professional. And then the other thing was like you were touching on court was changing lives. Um, and I know like we had the leaderboard and hustling is like a huge thing to be up there. But at the same time, like court said, like, what is the realistic expectation of you towards your customers and towards your business partners? Um, once you've signed them up and you're pouring back into them. Um, and yeah, intentionality, just being intentional with your day. Um, and I know, I think somebody else is going to talk about that, but, um, especially when you have a full-time job, um, or you have something else going on and I know it's really hard for like stay at home moms, even though people are like, Oh, well you're a stay at home mom. You have all the time in the world, but a day can get away from you. So just being intentional with your day, scheduling those times, um, that you're going to work your business, that you're going to return calls, that you're going to return texts, because otherwise we're going to be on that same hamster wheel that a lot of us were in Emerald City, where we're just glued to our phone all day. And I know, like, I think it was yesterday, Court, you, I think you put up a post yesterday or the day before where you're like, this is what I'm doing for 2019. And that really hit me hard because it was like, that right there is why we're doing this business is so that we're not stuck for our phone. We're not answering calls all day. We're not answering calls in the middle of the night. And I know like with Kat, she sets a timeline because she, she treats it like a business, like a storefront business. You know, I shut off at a certain time at night because, you know, that's her business. And so she lets her customers and her team know, you know, I'm treating this like a business because it is, and I'm not going to answer calls, you know, through midnight and one, two, three in the morning. And that's really how we have to mind shift ourselves um, into this actually being a business because otherwise we're going to be glued to our phones just like we were um, if you were in a previous company. So, yeah, that's I, all I got. I know we have a bunch of people, that. so. No, that's perfect. Um, one thing, Jules, that I'll talk a little bit more about is hearing what these millionaires have done with their money um, and how it's impacted the world was freaking mind blowing, like sex trafficking, bringing yes. like this one lady, I don't know, like we don't know where they worked, but she was older and she was talking about, she went to this place and like malaria was killing people because they didn't have clean water. And um, she was watching kids die and it would have cost a dollar to save each one of them. And she right. literally was watching them die in front of her eyes. And she's like, the value of a dollar and what we're doing is so much more than just the value of a dollar. And right. that's why she works so hard. And it was mind blowing to hear 
the, the things that these people have done with their money. And, and I walked out of there going, this is not about me. I looked at Jay. I was like, I don't even want any more purses. I'm like, that is sickening to me now. And I'm not like knocking anyone that goes and shops, but it was like, so I was like, damn, like I could have saved 10,000 kids lives. You know what I mean? That was just so impactful, man. Like we have our hands on something phenomenal, like that we can like really impact the world. Um, thank you, Julia, for sharing that. Um, let me see. Hold on. Mickey. Hold on. Can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. Hang on. Wait, let me see. I'm on my computer. And I never okay. used it. <clears throat> Your picture's pretty. Okay. Can you see me now? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, first of all, thanks for having me at the event. It was amazing. Um, I learned so much, not just about network marketing, but about myself and like how small I was dreaming, even though like I've accomplished big goals, I still feel like I wasn't dreaming big enough. So, um, some of the things that I took away from the event, I've got them on two different devices. So, um, one of the things were, um, the first thing that I wrote down um, was the best ability is availability. So I'm sure we're all really, um, like guilty of this. Like, I just want to sign up and sign up and sign up. So whenever I was going 40 K, it was like one of those, like, I just need to get a number in the computer. Like I need to get a number in, like, I don't care where it comes from, but I just need to get somebody in the computer. Then it was like, like you said, how are, how am I going to train all these people? Like, how does that even happen? Right. So not being available they said was like kind of that actually hinders your own success because when you're not available and people don't know who to go to, like there's people in, like I'm new to this type of industry. Like, so for that, for me to not, like, if I don't know an ant, like if I have a question, like who do I talk to, you know, I mean like we, we have an upline, right. But like, how do you, if you're not available, <clears throat> then your team has a hard time growing like, with intention and with purpose. And, you know, so that was one of the things I took from it was just being available. And that doesn't mean like, you know, answering everybody's question or, you know, being glued to your phone 24 seven, cause I'm not that person, but like just being available for those questions, like that's key to your business. Um, Johnny Wimberly said, true success is in the duplication process. So rather than enrolling people and just like throwing them into a chat or enrolling them and saying, go to the new promoter training page, like, we all learn different ways. And personally, I'm like a, I like to be a face to face, like zoom or, you know, like, Hey court, let me FaceTime you like that type of thing. Some people aren't like that. Some people are like, okay, I can just sit and read this and it, it's going to resonate with me. That's not my learning type. So just making sure that you can, um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm getting all these messages, um, duplicate what you've done. Like, yes, every, you know, like, it's great to be proud of your rank and what you've accomplished, but at the same time, like also teach people how to do what you did, like, or find out the way that they learn to make sure that, you know, Hey, like, I know you, this is your goal. How can we help you to get there? So that was one thing. And I really like Johnny Wimberly a lot. Um, another quote, I'm going to go find him. <laughs> <laughs> another quote I'm sure Lexi can help you with that another quote was um persuading gives them options but convincing tells them what to do so if you're begging someone to come into this industry and like well this is what it does for me and I've done this and I can buy this and in I I I mentality like that doesn't resonate with everyone so um just give them the options like they're gonna eventually be like that really good like I like that or yes I like that I can buy my groceries every week thanks to my weekly pay like it doesn't have to be about the extravagant things it can be about just the small victories um yes Sabrina it was persuading gives them options convincing tells them what to do uh, Marianne his name was Johnny Wimberly um he was really good he was actually probably one of my favorites he was awesome. um yeah he would he would like have you just like sobbing there um, the next thing was, um, Jeff or Bertie says you can have everything you want in life by helping others get everything they want in life. Um, I've seen that before from him, but hearing it like come out of his mouth was like, wow, like that's so true. Like this, this business and this industry is so much bigger than ourselves. Like 
you know, whether you work full time or you are a stay at home mom, or you just want to put groceries on your table every month, you can do all of that. Like, not, like I said, like not everybody wants splits and glam. Not everybody wants, you know, $25. Some people want a hundred dollars a week and that's okay. Like if that's where they are in their life, accept them for that and love them through that. Like that's a very, that was a very hard thing for me in the beginning. I was like, who wouldn't want to make thousands a week? Like that seems crazy, but that that's not where pe everyone is. So um, that's one thing. Um, the other thing Frazier Brooks says is it's our job to guide others home when they're lost. So, um, and he was really cool. He had like this really thick English accent. Um, but his, his story was more, well, you guys can see that on the, like, we'll talk about that more later. But um, for him, that doesn't mean guiding them home. Like you need to come to Lavelle or you need to come, but find a home as in like, um, loving, having a loving relationship or, you know, a growth environment or wherever that home may be for you. Um, it doesn't actually have to pertain to network marketing. That's like where he is. So just give them a path, give them tools to be able to navigate themselves, um, to become a better person or get what they want in life. So that was one thing from him. Um, Oh, what's her name? Jessie Lee Ward. She was very like in your face. Like she was, I, some of the things I wrote down about her were just like about her personality. Um, but one thing she said is leaders follow your team and engage. Um, and she says that by doing that, that means that, you know, like we're all leaders in some division, like you don't have to be a 200 K to be a leader. You don't like, there's people that are VIP 800 and 1600 that far exceed some of the leaderships that we would think of as a leader based on your rank. Like a rank doesn't define who you are in this business. It just shows basically in the amount of growth you had in that particular month. So um, I know that there's someone on my team who um, beat herself up for not hitting a 4K rank, I believe. It was like right around the time that I was coming in. And I just remember thinking like, man, I've learned so much from her and these like this little amount of time. So just engaging with your team and following them, find out what they like. Like she was like, I send my team who like, a green rose because that's what she told me her favorite color was green and she liked roses. So just get to know your people. There's so much more than just like a number or um, I didn't come from Emerald city. So like a box or, you know, whatever that is like, just get to know your people and love them for who they are and love them through it. Like, sure. We've all done, we've had, we've done, things in our life that we're not proud of. There's things that we've done that we're super proud of, but celebrating those little stair step victories every day, like, and cheer for yourself. Like, don't be afraid. Like she said, she's like, I wake up every day and I'm like, I'm a badass. Like I, I run this show and that's her personality and that's okay. It might not be yours. You can just be like, I'm just going to clap for myself over in the corner. Cause my, my victory doesn't seem that big, but it is because it's yours. So I learned a lot from her. Um, and then hopefully like we'll have a training on um, how she presents her four color personalities with that. Um, and then um, something that Curtis Broom said, he was the master of ceremonies. He was like, find your <clears throat> limits, then find the courage to blow past them. So like I, like I said, I realized I was doing small. Like when I first came in, I was like, man, I just want to hit VIP 800. Courtney's like, no, you're going to go 12K this month. I'm like, no, like that's crazy. Like I can't even imagine that. And then I went 12K and the next month she was like, all right, 40s on the horizon. I was like, yeah, right. And then it happened. So like breaking yourself out of those limits every day is like, and it doesn't have to be breaking. It's just, just keep, get a little bit closer to what you want. Um, the other thing, sorry, I'm all over the place because I'm like no, fired up. <laughs> um, um, let's see. I really liked Angel Fletcher. She was like, let me tell you 30, 35 reasons why you shouldn't be up here. And I think we were all sobbing. Like there was even a dry eye in our room. Um, uh, it, one of the other things was learn to be a little messy and resilient. So that means that like, okay, so court said like, she's not the most organized person. Right. So like, that's okay to be messy, but be resilient. Like learn from that. Like take note from people who aren't at the same level of you as you. Um, so that was one thing. Oh, let me see. I know I have a couple more notes that I wanted to touch on. Um, and what was that? Sorry. Oh, um, one thing I can't remember who wrote this. I think it might've been John Maxwell said this, but, um, 
Distributors don't watch the lips, they watch the feet. So when you're looking for people to come into your industry, they don't care that you're talking about all the things that you've done. They want to see you moving those mountains. They don't care how you got to the top. They want to know the steps in between there to see how you got there. Um, so that was um, one of the things. Um, where did I put that other note? I have like all these little like side subfolders in here. Um, oh, you build influence with your organization by giving oxygen with those to those with potential. So that means like you don't have to suffocate people. Um, there's some people who don't want, you know, to say like here I want to lock not the lock arms part, but like I got this. Like it's okay for people to say I don't I don't necessarily need that type of help. But some people work at different stages. Um, so that was that the whole John Maxwell uphill thing, like the tree acts, like that was amazing. Um, but I think somebody else is going to touch on that. Um, being intentional. Gosh, I had something else. Let me see. I, if love, I, I love what you said about duplication because I think a lot of us, and I know including myself, like I thought duplicating meant that it's going to look like me. Right. Okay. And what duplication, so duplication isn't like you said, throwing everyone into the same thing and you're going to duplicate. Duplication, and maybe I'm the only one that like had this wrong in my head, but for me, I was like, okay, well, I have a system and it's going to duplicate. No. What you have to figure out, like Mickey is saying, is you have to figure out how to duplicate. Like Mickey, duplicating her, like duplicating success with her is going to look different than duplicating success with somebody else because they learn differently. And that's where I like have found myself going, okay, I can increase my support there. I can do better there because duplicating doesn't mean you have one tool and you plug everyone into it. That's easy, but that doesn't duplicate leaders because I know I'm the type of person where if you just send me something, I need all the things. I need to hear it, see it, read it. I need all of those things. So figure out when you bring someone in how they learn best, like Mickey was saying. Okay, did you find it? Yeah, so it says, um, we don't let people build this business. We build this business for the people. Um, and basically what that means, and when they said that, I was like, Oh damn, like this isn't just like, I'm doing this for you because I want to make you better. No, it's like this business is what's going to help you or this, um, like this business will help that person. Not necessarily like I need you, like that I mentality is not going to help. Like I don't, okay, yes, I need the best rock star from this company to be this so that I can be this. Like once you take that I mindset out, you be amazed how, like whenever they said that I was like wow like no I don't need the next rock star I don't need I just need to make sure that the people I'm bringing in are going to be valued that I'm going to be able to pour into them that there's going to be a duplication process and I think duplication was a really big word that was used a lot over this week was just take yourself out of the equation how can you change people's lives how can you become a better person while also helping someone um, there's just so much like I, we can never even cover it on a zoom. So I'm hoping that like, we'll see trainings on this because it's amazing. Like, it's amazing when you get like, put yourself in a room of millionaires, a hundred million dollars. The one guy, uh, Ryan Higgins said, I sat at the back of the room four years ago and I made $400 a month or a week. I can't remember. He's like the next year I was in the gold section. The next year I was in the VIP section. He's like this year, four years later, guys, four years. That's like a high school kid's like high school career. Four years later, he's making $3.2 million this year. And if you don't think that that will put you like, holy shit, like there, like it was mind blowing to hear like I made $400 a month. And then the one kid who was like, I made was $1,200 a month. And now I'm making that every, I'm making that every every other hour or something like that. So yes, it's yes. amazing. Like yes. it was crazy. And like the third world countries that are making like thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars, like it was incredible to see that. So yeah. that's kind of my take on it. I mean, I could go on and on, but I'll let someone else talk. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, I know Kat texted me, oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Kat texted me that she wants to go next because she needs to take a shower. 
Okay. Hang on. Am I muted? Not anymore. Okay. Sorry, y'all have to see me like this. We're on vacation. So I love y'all. Um, okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So who is someone covering the intentional living with the five tree thing? You can. I don't have to. Is someone doing it? No, not necessarily. Okay. Cause I mean, I have other stuff. That whole freaking conference was like, bye y'all. Um, okay. So again, like everyone else said, I'm really sorry for y'all to see me like this. Um, but, um, there was so much, so, so, so much good stuff. Literally we laughed, we cried, we, it was just so, so freaking good. So if y'all have not gone, I encourage, I really want like my whole team to be there next year. Um, okay. But oopsies. Um, there was this one particular thing that I like, I freaking loved. What's his name? Johnny Maxwell. <laughs> What's his name? Yes. <laughs> okay. He was good. Um, okay. That was his name, right? John Maxwell. Yeah. John, whatever. Okay. So he, um, <laughs> um, he had covered, um, he talked about like intentional living and like five things that, well, okay. So he started this story and it was about like this boy who he wanted to chop down a tree, like in his backyard or front yard or whatever. Um, and he, he like stuck to it. He's like, I'm going to go and like get this tree. I'm going to like chop it like five times a day with an ax. Um, and then eventually like it'll fall down. So every single day he went out there, he hit the tree in the exact same swap five times. And then that was it. Right. Um, so that was like the story until it finally like broke. Um, so, uh, when he was talking about that, obviously went into some points. So, um, one thing he said, what I thought was like, it, I was like, Oh my God. He said, um, a lot of people have uphill hopes, but downhill habits. So there's so many of us that are like, I want to do this. Like I want this at the top. I want to do this at the top, but yet you're not doing anything at all to get there. Um, you're whining, you're complaining, you're not consistent. You're not doing anything to go uphill, you know? Cause like you guys, it's a climb. It's not like, he was like, I didn't one day wake up and I was at the top of the hill. Like, <laughs> that's not how it happens. Like we all have to climb and just, I mean, you may see like, you know, someone making millions, but they all started where we started. You guys, like, it wasn't something that they woke up one morning and they're like, Oh my God, I have a million dollar team. No, that's not how it worked. We all have, we all, every single one of us are doing the climb. And the thing is it, it, I'll get to it. But he talked about how some people, once they're making that climb, they get to a point to where like, they're like, I'm tired. Like, I think I'm just going to take a break, you know, see what happens. Well, what happens when you want to stop at an inclined hill, you're going to start sliding backwards and you're going to end up right back where you were. So the thing is with this business, when you treat this like a business, there's no resting. You hustle and you grind every single day, day in, day out. And you treat this business like literally if it was your lifeline, if you want it to work, obviously, if you want to come in and treat your business like a hobby, by all means do it, but don't sit here and expect to get, you know, professional, um, you know, income with it by changing people's lives because I take changing lives very professionally. And that's something that I care about day in, day out. And this is not something that I'm just like, okay, I think I'll just change one life today. No, if I can change a hundred lives, like that's what I want to do. Um, but this isn't something that I'm just like, okay, well, I'm not really feeling it today. I'll just try to get do it tomorrow. No. Um, but with the five tree cutting thing, magics, he talked about five, um, issues like of intentional, um, uh, I mean, characteristics or five keys, whatever, of intentional living. Um, and the first one was you need to know what you want to accomplish. So this boy, he knew what, I mean, obviously he knew what he wanted to do every single day. He was trying to cut down the tree, the rule of five. Thank you, Mickey. Um, so you need to know what you're wanting to do every day. You can't sit here and be like 80. I mean, obviously I have a problem with that. <laughs> Um, but you need to know what you're doing. You need to have a goal. Just like Courtney said, you need to have a goal. You need to make sure that you're hitting that goal and that you're doing everything in your power to like, you know, complete that goal. And the second one is you need to have the right tools to accomplish it. So he went back to the whole tree thing. Obviously if this kid or this man, boy, I'll just say boy, I don't really freaking remember. Um, if you know, he can, he wasn't a, obviously if he took a bat, he's not gonna be able to hit the tree, like get the tree down. You know, he knew what tool he needed. So for us in our business, we need to know what proper tools we need for our business. However, you know, you're trying to run your business like us, you know, we do social media, we have the proper trainings and stuff like that. Like you can't just be like, okay, one day if it's something's working, like you can't just wake up and be like, okay, actually I want to try it this way. Like, cause you're completely like going backwards and you're losing like focus of what's actually working. You know what I mean? Um, the third thing was you have to have focus. 
Um, hang on. I don't, can you still see me? No. Okay. One sec. Can you hear me though? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So the third thing, um, let me go back to it when he was talking about the, um, the, you have to have focus. Oh, this is what it was. It says you can't keep switching trees, hoping that they'll fall down. Um, so this goes to you know, back to our businesses, you know, just because that greater opportunity comes like through you or some, someone sweet talks to you and they're just like, Hey, you know, I think you could really make it in this business. The thing is you guys, if you're not going to be consistent one place, what makes you think if you go to another place, you're going to have ultimate success because you, you weren't consistent where you are in the first place to gain success. So you do like having this whole tree hopping mentality. You're not going to be successful that way. You're doing nothing. You, it takes consistency. It takes, Oh, that's four. Be consistent. Uh, you have to have like sharp, like razor sharp focus on your goals, on what you want to accomplish. And you have to be consistent. You guys, like you can't sit here and just hope like, okay, like I'm going to do this, but you know, that's not working for me. And like, here's a new shiny thing. Because the thing is like, I don't think, I don't remember what he talked about. Um, I just lost my train of thought one second. Um, and the fifth thing was you have to keep swinging until it falls. What was that one on there? Um, okay. I already hit that. Sorry. I'm having to go back to my notes. Dude, I look like a freaking. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Let me see. Um, Okay. Yeah. I already covered that. Okay. Yeah. So the be consistent one, he said every day, you know, obviously the guy picked up the ax and went to the same tree and swung five times consistently. And it says a whole bunch of people aren't successful because they do it some days just when they feel like it. And then they only want to do it when the right opportunity comes. So a lot of these millionaires, what I thought was really awesome about it. There's some people who had been in network marketing for forever and like maybe some had been with the same company forever. You know, there was maybe some who I did like a few company hops until they found their home and stuff like that. But then they were straight up and they're like, I realized, you know, I can't keep doing this whole company hop trying to find my home every single time and not putting the work with every single company because the problem was them. You know, it's not the company's fault. It's not the comp plan's fault. It's not the leader's fault. It's, it's you, like, it's what you're doing. It's, you have to do, take all the proper steps in order to be successful and just do good. Okay. That's it. <laughs> no, I love that. Um, <clears throat> that was something that really resonated with me was like these people had been with companies for 20 years, 30 years. Um, and they yeah. saw massive success and they had made massive mistakes, but they kept at it. And one thing that they kept saying is it doesn't matter what products you have and what comp plan you have, that that does not matter. It is up to you. Yes. Yep. Some people experience success better here or there, but if you are steadily like having that incline of 10%, that's on you. That's up to you, not up to anyone else. So I loved that. Um, thank you, Kat. I'll let you go take a shower. All right. I love you guys. Love you. Have fun. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Lisa, I saw you on here. Hold on. Or can I just piggyback off of what Kat said? That reminded me um, yes. when she talked about John Maxwell. He said um, something about the finish line. He was like, you will have never arrived. When you have arrived, you're dead. And he was like, yes. so if you create that finish line and you cross that finish line, there's no more value. So don't set a finish line. Don't say like, I'm just going to get to this and that's it. Um, I wish I had it. I can't. I don't that know where I put so it. Um, but okay. So... I thought I wrote it somewhere in here. Oh, okay. How long will it take? Don't ask yourself how long it'll take. Ask them how far will I go? He says, I believe there's no finish line. When you've arrived, you're dead. And when you put a finish line out, then, and I typed a bunch of gibberish. So apparently I wasn't like typing. I was typing too fast. But, um, and he said, making progress is moving backwards slowly. I don't remember why I put that. But, and then he talked about a growth environment is a place where people are further ahead of you. Um, so just, out of that, like you have, I have arrived attitude is where he was saying like, you're not finished. There is no finish line. And he even said, he's like, when people ask me like, why are you still working? Like, why are you almost 80 years old and you're still writing books? And he's like, cause I'm still living. Like, this is why, you I know, love, I'm there. Yeah. he said he writes, he thinks, what did he say? He reads, he writes, he thinks. And they were like, but John, it's Christmas. And he's like, and I read, I write, and I think. And they're like, but it's Thanksgiving. And he's like, and I read, and I write, and I think. And I love that because I don't know, I'm about you, Mickey, or 
I know I get that a lot from people that aren't in this industry and they're like, are you always going to work this hard? Especially like, especially my friends that aren't in this industry, like some of my neighbors whom I love very dearly, but they're like, are you always going to work this hard? Are you always, and I'm like, yes, yes. And, and really quick, sorry. Another thing that one of them said, you might remember who was, who are you to make it past that finish line and not help other people? I mean, not that we want to have that finish line mentality, but basically if you've arrived and you think you've arrived and you set at the table for, of success for too long, you'll fall. You cannot go and set up the table of success for too long and celebrate without going and saying, who else can I bring with me? Who else can I teach? Because that's the whole part purpose of this industry is to empower other people. That was huge. Sorry. I loved that. Um, okay. Did you have anything else Mickey in your notes? Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Hey y'all. How y'all hey, doing girl. tonight? Hey girl. Hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, well, that's the reason why you're going to always work it is John Maxwell have a passion about his work. It never feels like work or that you have to take a vacation from it when it's something that you love to do. And passion and work and purpose, it gives you that. That's why so many people feel um, like they are in mundane situations when they wake up at night. They are in traffic in the night in a, in a, in a dark following headlights onto a job and then they get off at five and they following headlights again so they are in this this race where it feels as though it's mundane it doesn't feel like it's tapped into purpose and we are tapped into purpose and that's what makes this industry unique and different is basically what they're saying you know i've been a student of this industry for the past four years and I can tell you the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the indifferent. I've enjoyed each step of the journey along the way because it made me who I am today. It's molding me into the better, the person that I need to be for the people that I need to be it too. And um, it's so crazy. I held on to my notes for dear life. I get to Dallas Airport yesterday. Um, seven o'clock in the morning after missing my flight, I'm crying and bawling my eyes out that I was going to miss my grandson's recital. And I get a, a hit on one of my posts and I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one Zoom interview with a young lady about the opportunity. And I go to my notes and I left my book in the airport. I don't know how I did that. They was doing a call to come on the plane. Like I'm so, I'm praying that somebody in Dallas, Fort Worth, <laughs> get get me my book with my name and my phone number in it with all the notes but i'm so i'm grateful that i am a person that he uh that learns from seeing and and hearing and so i can't actually go and regurgitate a lot of what i picked up and a lot of what i learned at this event woo to me this was my fourth GoPro event um, that I've been to my first year in network marketing, I was gifted a ticket to the event and it was a life changer for me. Um, and last year was the first year that I didn't go. And I really feel like um, although this year was the season of quantum leap, it was basically from they talked about the compound effect that tree chopping, that same place at the same time, just by staying in the industry itself. You know, even if you've had to make a move or you've had to make a switch in a company, you know, if you're still chopping trees in this industry and you are integral about building your brand and yourself as the entrepreneur, then it'll never be about a product or a company. And so that's what we want to do. And he talked, he talked about, and I love this year, it evolved to targeting influencers in your organization. And if you have people that are hungry, train them to be influencers. Because when you do that, you are giving deposits that is gonna help feed their families and your families to come. And so that's what I think is evolving with the industry as a whole, because we do have more and more people that are popping up and that are able to sell products and services just by their influence on social media or Instagram or Facebook. And so you may have a person that is absolutely clueless in your organization, 
but they hungry. I mean, you could almost see the growl in their face and you know they're hungry. You as a leader, as a, a person who is trying to build a solid granite, remember he once said the granite, if you're trying to build the granite foundation, in your organization because that's where you're going to build your house you're not going to build it on sand you're going to build it on granite then you need to target those influences now i'm not talking about trying to wake up the dead he talked about that too they talked about that too not trying to um wake up the dead is better to give birth and be able to bring in more people but also to start making um what he say not we don't want to make people prospects we want to make people people um jesse lee ward talked about the um you know bringing out the best of your humanity um how she goes on and she reels people in every day just by being her regular crazy self you know if y'all watch i love i love courtney how you do this you'll talk about the craziest things sammy and gracie may do i mean from toilet paper to the bathroom to this 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 that is pulling people in because you are human um um, making yourself look like a human being and not just this machine that has this over extravagant glamorous life and you know you are making yourself a real person and then when you get to a place where a promotion comes down in the organization or the company you can hit it hard because people already are tapped and tuned into you and that's what we want to pe make people not so spammy or whatever on their pages they want to go after the humans like uh, Jesse before said, you want to go after the humans. Um, I love the balance of the panels that were there. You had people under 30 millionaires. You had people that been in the industry 30, some even more than 30 years. But you had a balance of how they achieved their success. You even had some who had old success and are evolving with today's paradigm shift. I love that fact. Not everybody up there on that panel built their business on social. Remember, some of them social wasn't even around when they built their businesses. They built their businesses by private business um, receptions. They built their business by face-to-face. -face. They built their business by one-on-one. -on -one. They did talk highly about Zoom, about how Zoom gives you um, a different access to people and being able to have them face-to-face -face and be able to talk to them. You want to, people want to know how much you care before they care how much you know. Um, and so what are you giving back as far as tools and things like that out there when you're building your influence and building your brand and not just product, 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 business, 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 you need to be with me. I got the best thing. I, I you know what I mean? You have to get away from that. And I love how, um, I think it was Jesse Lee Ward or somebody else that said when they put up posts, they put up posts that attack all full color personalities. That was so different and unique because you can go after the red, the green, the blue, and the yellow all in one post if you are intentional about the way you're doing things and intentional about how you're posting. And then also, too, always being a student. Don't think, like she said, don't think you've arrived. You have to still be a student. If you need help with inviting, if you need help with promoting, if you need help with closing, if you need help with whatever it is, be okay with being open to being a student to this craft, a student to this profession, a student to this industry, because there's always somebody that can teach you something. And if, you, if you're the smartest one in your circle, you're in the wrong circle. There's no growth environment in that circle. You have to get around people that know more than you. And don't think they have to be up. Like, like Mickey was saying, they could be in your success team. I don't even call my downline my downline. I call them my success team because I believe that their success, my success is predicated on their success. So they're my success team. And I want to make sure that they are getting what they need to be able to grow bigger organizations like they want to. And again, education is essential. If we are not educating ourselves through personal development and investing in that, Everybody should be going to conference. How many of you are registered for Dallas, Fort Worth to go to, or not register, or are going, because I don't think the registration is out, but are going to our company event, right? All right, that's awesome. We definitely want to get most of our teams, as many people as we can, get to the company event. 
Okay. Even if you feel like, okay, um, you know, this is so familiar to me. I've seen this, I've heard it, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's a different company. It's not going to take away from the energy that you get when you're in the room or the people that you're going to connect with and meet. Somebody there may have your answer. And then now that, um, Courtney and, and um, Mickey and um, and um, Jacqueline and Jules and all of us have been exposed to a higher level of education and vibration in direct sales and network marketing. Now, you guys, we have to get the GoPro. Like, you have to get there. If people, when they ask me, Lisa, how did you go 80K in eight weeks? Well, it took three years, okay? It took a compound of going up and down and learning and falling and failing and going forward and losing the team and building it up again and crying my eyes out and getting mad at my husband and being away from my kids and skipping homework. It took that to get to where I am because what people seen, and this was the first thing I think they put on that board was consistency. It didn't matter what I did. You seen me consistent throughout everything that I've done. And so with that, with that, came the influence that whenever I did move or whenever I did make a shift, people could believe that it was a valid choice that I was making and they wanted to be with it. They wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to be attached to that. And that's what we have to do. Cause guess what? Each one of us are unique. We bring something different, something amazing, something magnificent to the table. And you have to tap into that very thing and know that that's what you're going to offer. That person has been praying for what you have. That person has been praying is for you. It's specific for you. So you don't have to worry about on the side, what's going on on the side, what's going on in front of you, any comparison, any competition. In the mirror every morning, your only competition should be you. And that's what I learned from GoPro. That's what I learned on being a network marketing professional. And you know what else I learned? Not to be a damn shame to tell people I'm a network marketing professional. Not to be afraid to tell them who I am and what my profession is and why I'm passionate about it. Because one day, one day somebody will be a vision carrier that you planted a seed in because you were were loud enough, transparent enough to say, I failed. I lost rank. I built rank. I helped people. They left me. I had some people stab me in my back. I had some people stay with me. I had some people talk bad about me. I had my own ego problems. I had to be humbled. I had to get down. I had to be built back up. But through all of that and my vulnerability, I'm telling you, I will fail forward because they talk about failing forward. I will fail forward until the death of me because that's how much I love, breathe, eat, sleep, shit, this business and this, this freaking opportunity because I know that essentially my tree going to fall. I love you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't have anything to add to that. That was awesome. Thank you, girl. Thank you. Um, Alexis, you ready? Okay. Hi. Hey. I'm so excited. <clears throat> I had to sit here, so I wrote my notes out. Okay. For those of you guys that don't know me, I'm very, very organized. But um, I swear, I think all of them have been covered. So I'm like, please call me. <laughs> Um, so there's, like Lisa was talking about, um, being proud of being a network marketer is, I think, one of the greatest things that I learned um, at GoPro. Uh, you know, the, the very next day I went live and that is what my live was about. Exactly that, of being proud and damn proud that, yes, I am a network marketer. And, you know, um, there was, there was a, I don't even remember which individual it was. I, it might have been Eric Worre that he, he debunked someone. And he's like, I love when people come at me with, oh, you're in one of those pyramid things. And he started um, going and asking them. And one of the things was he's like, um, Hey, I, I believe he said something like, oh, what did it do to you? Or what's your story? 
And because in reality, it's not that individual's um, idea about network marketing. It's about something that happened to them in network marketing or someone that they know, their mom, their, their dad or whatever, whatever it is. And really just kind of drilling down to the bottom of that and figuring out why it is that they don't like that pyramid scheme and then educating them educating them and and all of the possibilities educating them on what it can do for them and if it's not about the money great make the money and give it all away to charity because there's a hell of a lot of people out there that can use the money and um so i would say that's probably one of the biggest themes that i really uh, resonated with another thing that I really wanted to talk about because I'm guilty of it. Um, and if I'm guilty of it, I know that there's others in our team that probably are, and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but we have to keep it classy. Um, you know, when I think about all of the balance posts and all of the things that, um, you know, that we try to do to um, draw in business, this is a business and you need to treat it as a business. And I'm not saying don't post your results because that's exactly what we need to do. We have to show people how we can change our body composition, but be classy about it. You don't need to be in your underwears, in your bra. And I mean, you know, there's just, there's a certain way that you can take that picture and you can show exactly what you need it to show without showing everything else, if you guys know what I mean. So, um, you know, we're role models. People do look up to us, believe it or not. And um, even even those that you think are not watching are watching. So I, that's, a, that's one point that really I had to hone in on and, um, you know, kind of take a step back for myself. Um, another thing that I really, found um, powerful was find yourself a mentor. Um, you know, I, for the longest time, Courtney, you've been my mentor. And I love you for that. And I'm so grateful for that, you know, because I would not be where I am today, had it not been for you and many, many other people on our team. But sometimes you have to step outside of your own circle you have to step outside of those that you know and your mentors can be people that don't even know that they're your mentors so um, I have a list of names of tons of people that were on panel discussions or that were um, speakers and I mean I'm telling you there were so many people that I am gonna start to follow and um, you know all kinds of books just there's so much education that we can learn for ourselves outside of Thrive and outside of Lavelle. And I think that that's a, a core theme that I think all of us really heard. Um, consistency, 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 consistency. I probably heard it 150 times. And um, uh, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We're in it for the long haul. So if, if you're trying to sprint to the top, hey, great. Um, that's wonderful when you're in your VIP phase. After that, think about it as a marathon because you have to think, are you in this for the long haul or are you just in this for a short period of time to try to make as much money as you can for your Christmas presents? I mean, it's, it's really up to you to make that decision, but um, I will tell you one thing that oh, I, Eric Warre mentioned, and it was something like there's um, a, a, an individual was making like, uh, or had 300,000 people in their downline. Out of that 300,000 people, they only had 25 rock stars. Like that's, that's not even 1% of their of their downline so um you know we've got we got to think about that we can't be looking for that rock star i mean i i guess we could be looking but um the masses you know enrolling in the, the masses is really i think something that's something that's that's powerful and positive for me i'm gonna read um if you guys don't have a pen and paper i'm gonna read uh 
some closing skills that we learned. And it's actually, it's helped me personally um, just here in the last few days. And I thought if it's helped me this much, it can definitely help you guys. So um, when we are closing, because that's, that's probably, I feel like one of my biggest um, faults or I, I don't know what, you know, one of my biggest, um, what do you call it? Struggles. Yeah, struggles is is the closing piece of it. I can talk to people for days. I've got no problem talking to people. The problem is is talking to them and knowing what to say and how to close them. So there's five closing questions. So the very first thing that they talked about was asking to send the video. Don't just send so that Thrive video that came out. Um, I've been, I've been sending that to my potentials, right? But before I send it, I always ask if I send this video, would you watch it? And, and, and always mention that it's a four minute video because you want them to know that it's very short and sweet. Um, so, so they say yes, after you get that confirmation and that yes, then that's when you move into these closing questions. Um, I give it about 10 minutes because it's four minutes. So if I haven't heard back from them, then I will, I will reach out to them. And so here's question number one. What did you like best about what you saw? Um, you know, or, or you can word it. What did you like best about the video? Um, then moving on to question number two. I want to set up the follow-up. Okay. Um, then number two, on a scale from one to 10, meaning one, meaning you have zero interest, 10, meaning that you're ready to get started, where are you at? Um, <clears throat> then you can kind of gauge and you can kind of see what they're thinking about. If they, if they, I mean, yesterday I had a girl give me an eight, but, um, I, I didn't I didn't close on her, but I know I've I know I've got her interest because she's an eight, right? So I know where she's at. If someone's at a three, a two, I'm not gonna put all my energy into into that follow-up with them. I mean, sure, I'll certainly follow up, but I, I know that they're not an eight, right? Um if you if you were to get started, this is question three. If you were to get started on a part-time basis, approximately how much would you need to earn per month in order to make it worth your time? Everybody has a number. Everybody has a number. Uh, and I think Mickey kind of touched on that earlier. It's going to be different. It's going to be different for everybody. So it's good to know what that number is for that person, right? Um, question number four. Realistically, how many hours could you commit each week to develop that kind of income? So here you're already kind of putting it in their mind like, oh, yes, I do. I'm going to have to work this. If this is how much I want to make, this is how much time I have to um, set aside to make that kind of money. And you're making them think about it. You're not, you're not giving the answers. You're only asking the question. Uh, question number five, how many months would you be willing to work those hours a week while you were developing that kind of income? So now you're setting a precedent for them that, okay, it's going to take me six months to make X amount of dollars on this, this part-time basis over, you know, ho however many months. Um, and then question number six, which is where you go into that closing. If I could show you how to develop an income of, and you give their answer, per month, working however much time they said they could, they could provide it, hours a week over the course of, Again, answer to question number five, months, would you be ready to get started? So, you know, it's, it's funny because uh, he went through and he had the worst, um, it, was, it was so funny. He, it, it, was, it was like he just debunked everything. Because this individual was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. And 
once he started asking the questions, it was funny because you could totally see that individual turning around was asking questions. So, um, you know, I've, I've found that that's, that's helped me tremendously just here in the past few days. So um, I think knowing the type of questions to ask uh, are really important in order to be able to close. Um, and I think some others already talked about this, but um, becoming the leader that they want to follow. So it's, you know, it, it's so important, I think, to be funny and to be real and to be individualized because, um, you know, we don't, we all don't want to be Courtney or Chelsea or um, Mickey, you know, we want to be who we are. And that's really important because people are going to see right through you if you're acting as though you're Courtney. That's why it's really important to find those mentors that speak to you because more than likely you're, you've got some type of connection or some type of um, commonality with that individual. And, I mean, you know, if not, then at least you can grow and you can gather ideas and you can reformulate that into who you are. So um, another thing, and I, I feel like this goes for any network marketing business, um, but to be adaptable. Um, you know, when John was talking about uh, long ago, they used to have to make a phone calls and they were charged long distance charges, right? We have cell phones today. I mean, everybody's got a cell phone plan. You don't get charged long distance charges. So that for them was like, oh, you know, the, the clouds opened up and they didn't have to spend as much money. And, um, but being adaptable, what happens if Facebook goes down tomorrow? How are you going to be able to take your business and still run it? What are you going to be able to do to kind of um, keep at the same pace? And, and the things that you're doing today probably might not work in a year and a half from now. So being able to be adaptable and make those changes, you know, companies, companies change. Um, you know, I will, I will tell you that, um, you know, I, Hey, I would die if Courtney left, but I would find a way. I would find a way to make this shit work because this is this is life for me. Um, one other thing that I've been doing, um, somebody I don't even remember who it was talked about um ten pennies in your pocket. So for me, this helps me keep consistent and um. I'm, I'm, I'm a victim of not being consistent. And so it definitely keeps me accountable. Um, take 10 pennies and put them in your left pocket. Start off the day doing whatever you do. Take those pennies and as you uh, go throughout your day and you talk to an individual about your business, take one penny out and move it over to your right pocket. What does this do? At the end of the day, you can, one, you can look at your pennies and be like, damn, I only talked to one person. You are able to use this. You can use business cards too. Oh, yes. Yeah, so you can. You can use business cards. Thank you, Lisa. That's a great idea. I love that. I do carry around my business cards. <laughs> But um, yeah, so for one, it, it definitely keeps you in that mindset because you hear this jiggling all day, right? You, you feel it there. You're like, oh yes, that's, that's my pennies. Um, so making sure that you're always being consistent and, and just kind of using that as a little tool. No one has to know what you're doing, but you know, you're, able, you're able to do that on your own and, and still keep yourself held accountable. Um, last thing, which, uh, Lisa talked about was the events. Um, I found GoPro so inspirational and I, I found all of the Lavelle events. So, so inspirational as well. I mean, there has not been an event too, that I haven't learned something that I haven't met someone new that I haven't thought about new ideas. I mean, every, every single event gives you some type of empowerment. So taking, taking all of those bits and nuggets and pieces of knowledge and running with it or taking it and say, no, you know what? I didn't care for what so-and-so did here. So I'll never do that. 
and, and you can learn from their mistakes. But at the same token, um, by having these events, these companies are putting them on for you, right? You're, you are basically getting your team free training. So it's, it's genius when you think about bringing all of your teams to learn and to grow and to be a part of this industry. So um, if you guys have not been amazed by the things that we're talking about, I'm going to tell you that we will, um, well, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure, like without a doubt, we'll go next year. Yeah, and we'll train deeper, like throughout the next few weeks. We'll take some different topics and train deeper for you guys. Um, but yeah, we'll be there next year. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, and and hey, if you guys aren't, I will. <laughs> yeah, I'll go for sure. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. Um, is Sonovia on here? I don't know who some of these iPads are. Okay, I don't see her, but I don't know who iPad 3 or Galaxy is. Um, Jacqueline. Hey, can you hear me? I know we're running super late, so thank yeah. you all so much. By the way, I know this is way longer than we usually do a Zoom, but we have so much we want to share. So thank you all, seriously, for hanging in with us. Okay, Jacqueline. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll just wrap it up because I know people are getting tired, um, or maybe they're not. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I had a great time. It was amazing. Uh, there was like no dry eyes in the place several times. So that just tells you what kind of an event it was. Uh, but I'll just talk a little bit about um, a topic that I felt like um, uh, consisted with each speaker that spoke. And that was, uh, they talked about try not to be a person of success, but be a person of value. And I really liked that. And um, they talked about, we've all, you, you guys have all touched on different things, but talking about having a servant's heart. And I think that, um, Courtney, when you're talking about how these people who are successful were be able to, able to give back. And um, I think really what they're saying is, you know, if you're only in this business, and I think a lot of times it's like what you've said, Courtney, several times, you know, don't just go out there and try to fill your numbers, you know, go out there and try to figure out how you can help someone. And I think really in any business, success comes from being humble and having that servant's heart. And we saw that time and time again with these people, they talked about how, you know, when they made money, you know, no matter how big or small, they were able to give back to their communities. A few people had built, you know, medical centers and all di different kinds of things to, to be able to give back. And I think that's, kind of the purpose in life is to be able to, to give back. Um, we talked about um, people fall in love with your passion. And I love that because uh, they talked about just being normal and try to get to know people. And again, same thing, um, talking about how, you know, we're not in this business. I mean, obviously we want to make money, but how do you make money? I think by being a normal person, I think by having a genuine relationship with people, they talked about, you know, talk to every single person that you know, like on your Facebook or whatever, but, but have like a normal conversation, develop a normal conversation. Don't just send them a message and say, Hey, I'm a, you know, I'm thriving. Can I help you? Or how can I do that? No, just say like, gosh, I really like your Christmas tree. Where'd you get your ornaments or whatever? You know what I mean? Develop a relationship with them. So many of these people. And also I think when you were talking, Courtney, about, um, you know, settling in on maybe four people a month or whatever. We, we heard from people, I think the lady said she'd been in network marketing for 30 years and had 500 people in her organization. That's mind blowing because that's not a lot of people, but clearly she has been extremely successful. So she has trained those people that work for her and that's how she's met her success. Would you stop? That's my boyfriend waving to everybody in the background. <laughs> um, you know, same old, same old. So anyhow, I, I really liked that because I think, again, don't focus on, you know, getting all those numbers. And we all know that we've probably got a lot of people on our list that have not done anything, right? And a very, very few people that work really hard and get things done. So we know that it's true that, um, you know, as we train and as we work with people, we will, we will be more successful also. Um, and I liked that. 
Um, you guys talked about um, my favorite thing, which was the tree. And I just love the analogy only because I am a little bit like ADHD and run from here to there. And, and, and I love the way you said, you know, you could just run around and like, oh, I want to cut down this tree. Oh, I want to cut down this tree today. Oh, I want to cut down that tree. And that's kind of, you know, a, a lot of times I feel like that, like, oh, I think I'm going to try this today. Oh, I think I'm going to try that today. And really, like everybody has said, the general theme was be consistent. And I think that, you know, if you chop the, if you hit the same tree enough times, it's going to fall down. So I think that, you know, when you're talking to true leaders and people that have made money doing this and they tell you that that's probably um, what we should be doing. Um, let's see, find a mentor. That was really important. I mean, we have, we all have Courtney and I, and, and the thing is you look at any people in business, I mean, Magic Johnson talked about, all of them talked about this. You know, the way to be successful in a business is find a mentor, figure it out. And that doesn't necessarily just have to be Courtney. It could be, as Kat said, Johnny Maxwell, whose name is John. <laughs> that, was, that was so funny. I love Kat. Anyhow, um, you know, you can, he could be your mentor. Read up on his books. Find someone that you, you know, I mean, it doesn't have to be someone just you know, in our, in our level or in Thrive, it can be, you know, a network marketing professional. It can be, you can learn a ton from these people. I mean, we all did. Um, anyhow, I have so many notes, but I, again, I really think that the thing that I left away with so many things, but one of the main things I left away with, um, is that all of these people that were successful to me truly did have a servant's heart and really cared about people. I mean, look at Magic Johnson. The first place he started building his movie theaters and things like that was inner city. He went back to his roots. He wanted to help people be able to afford things in the community where he grew up in. And I think that, you know, in order to be success successful in any part, in any area of our life, the biggest thing is service and charity. And that is the way we're going to find the happiness. It might not come in a huge monetary check, it might be smaller, but you know what? We're going to be happy. And, and I, I just love that. So thank you so much, Courtney, for the opportunity to, to, to attend this. Um, our team is amazing. I loved everyone that was there. Um, and I'm just grateful for this opportunity to work with so many amazing women and a few men, I guess, in the group too. <laughs> and thank you, Jay, for helping us and being there for all of us too. <laughs> I will tell him. I will tell him. Um, Thank you guys. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you for opening up your hearts. And one of the, the hardest things to do is to take a look in the mirror. And, you know, I think that that's one thing that, that kept playing over and over was it starts, it's not about you, but it is about how you treat the people standing in front of you and how you serve them. And just, man, my vision for this industry is forever changed and is forever huge. Like, Mickey said playing it small is like it's not even an option anymore and playing it big doesn't mean enrolling 10,000 people playing it big means you're dreaming big you are you are your impact is great your impact can be very very large with very few people if you play your cards right and you really do like immerse yourself in duplication. So I won't keep y'all forever. We'll have more trainings throughout the next few weeks um, of different things. Thank y'all for hanging out with us tonight. I hope you learned something. I hope it inspired you and I will talk to y'all soon. I love y'all. Good night. Bye.